Jesus says, I am so happy to see you about your work for me with a heart of love. February 12, 2017 Words from Jesus to Sister Claire Spoken by Jackie Jesus began, I want your worship and musing to be seamlessly united to me. The two are one, Claire, and what begins in worship should move seamlessly to the keyboard. You did not do the wrong thing this morning. You did what I wanted you to do and what I asked you to do. Music first, but from a place of worship. This is the secret. We as two become united as one and will do this together. You're beautiful, my dove. How I miss those trusting eyes. When you look at me, most of the time it is with fear. Oh, how that hurts me. Why are you afraid? Because, Lord, you are holy and I am just a sinful woman. He continued. What you say is true. But you are under construction and I want you to come to me as the construction manager on the job. You've done your best. I've watched you all day handle one complicated situation after another. And although you feel you've done badly, we both know you've done your best. And all that was in your capability to satisfy the needs of everyone. You have a very real enemy, my beloved. You are my beloved and I adore you. I was crying because I missed you and you came running into my arms as soon as you had the opportunity. Do you know how grateful I am to you for this sweet attention? And when you hold the communion host and kiss it gently, as if it were my cheek. Do you know what that does to me? I melt. I long to take you to myself in heaven, to be with you forever and ever. It is a bittersweet moment for me, as I know it is for you too. O oh, children, children, I long for your love and attention. I know your days can be so fragmented, with distractions. But after you recover yourselves, don't run from me, run to me. When you run to me, my heart cries out, here she comes. My bride finally broke free and she's running to be in my embrace again because she longs for me as I long for her. That's what I say, truly. Then I melt. If you are turned away by an earthly care, I'm crushed. Don't let the enemy pull you away from me. That's why I grasped you so tightly and cried. Because you did make it, despite the enemy's attempts to steal you from me again. This is how I feel about you. I'm overjoyed when you come to me. Understand that on another level. Look at it this way. I'm the construction boss. You are one of my employees. You are in charge of a building part of a very tall skyscraper. It looks messy because it is messy. Materials are being used, trimmed back, plastered, nailed, welded. Oh, so much is going on on the site. Trucks come and go, dropping loads of gravel for cement, bringing in steel beams and cables. Heavy equipment is moving and erecting scaffolding, piles of metal wires and all kinds of materials that are left over from the day's work 
leave the yard looking dirty and disorganized, but another floor has been added to the building and it is going up. It looks pretty wrecked because it's under construction. You have done your best as the crew boss. You finished another level. But it was messy and leaves you feeling as if you didn't please me. When in fact you did, Claire. The enemy never rests. He is continually looking for ways to steal your peace. And his favorite is perfectionism, judgment and condemnation. While I am standing by, smiling at the work you completed, though it is still messy. In the twinkling of an eye, I will finish the job, clean up the mess and leave it spotless. In the meantime, each level is being completed and the building is rising higher and higher. I am not a mean-spirited taskmaster. I am the lover of your soul, ever so happy to see you about your work for me with a heart of love. When the days go badly and are fragmented, I understand. I see the forces opposing you. I watch you wade through them with as much love and patience as you can muster. And I'm pleased with you that you persevere no matter how messy it looks. You are still committed to seeing it through. But you cannot have a heart of love if you are continually looking over your shoulder at me, fearing that I am displeased with you. That displeasure will carry over into how you deal with others. That is why you need dwelling prayer. You need to experience my joy and satisfaction with you. You need to bond and soak up the love I feel for you. Then you will be encouraged and strengthened to begin again tomorrow, overflowing with love for your brothers and sisters. So I'm asking you, my brides, come to me, knowing that whatever you've done or failed to do during the day, I love you and I appreciate your every effort more than you will ever understand. That's why I want you to sit before me in the portrait. It conveys that love and appreciation and gets your heart and mind going in the right direction until you are open and connected to me in your spiritual vision and emotions. You see, I am terribly misunderstood and taken as a harsh and cruel person. You must do this, you must do that, your job was not done perfectly. Brow down and finger pointed. No, no, rather I am tender, tender hearted and the lover of your soul, longing to show you my gratitude for your perseverance, mistakes and all. So keep this vision in your heart and mind, Claire. I am waiting for you to break free from all earthly entanglements and come to me. Come to me with joy and expectation that I will embrace and approve you. Then, if there is a little matter to discuss, we will discuss it and move on. But please do not look over your shoulder fearfully. Rather, look longingly, telling the lover of your soul, I'm coming, Lord, I'm coming. I'll break away from this soon and send me a kiss of promise that soon we will be enjoying sweet fellowship together. 